Hello and welcome back to uh, <clears throat> the demo portion of chapter uh, 5. So chapter 5 we've been talking a lot about uh, merchandising operations. So for your homework, and I did check the syllabus this time, you're supposed to do problem 5-2a and problem 5-5a. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is problem 5-2b. Uh, so this should um, hopefully set you up for some um, set you up for success whenever you're doing uh, your homework. Uh, even though the dollar numbers are different, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the journal entries um, will will be the same, and and they'll always be the same, right? Whenever we purchase goods or sell goods, uh, pay freight. It's always gonna. It's always gonna be the same journal entry. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and create our journal, and I'm just gonna put in the date. Remember, just arbitrarily picking uh, number of rows. Gonna merge and center that left the line. Drag it down again. Just an arbitrary amount. Just making sure I have enough room for all our journal entries. I'm going to make my debit column, my credit column. I'm going to center these and row, or excuse me, column G, column H. I want to put that in proper form, so I want to make sure I have my um, my commas. And I'm going to get rid of the decimal places because. Well, let's face it, all these problems really do not have any uh, any sense to them. Change, I mean. <laughs> um, hopefully they make sense to you. Um, okay, so first thing they tell us in problem 5-2B, they say that we're, we're Webster Company. They were established on July 1st. Its sales terms are 210 net 30. Uh, credit terms for its purchases vary with a supplier, that makes sense. Um, selected transactions for the first month of operations are given below. Unless noted, all transactions were on account and involve merchandise held for resale. Webster Company uses the perpetual inventory system. So remember, perpetual says keeps updating constantly. Every time there's a sale, we're updating that inventory. Okay, so on uh, seven one <clears throat> seven one. We purchased goods from Dawson Incorporated. Um, Twenty five hundred dollars. Terms one ten net thirty. Okay, that's very easy for us to do. We're buying inventory, so we want to credit an asset, specifically inventory. They give us the dollar amount twenty five twenty five hundred dollars. And our credit for this is going to be accounts payable, right? Because we owe, actually, accounts payable. And I'm going to say Dawson. Even though accounts payable is one big account, I want to keep track of who I owe money to. So in the real world, we would have the accounts payable journal. And then underneath that, um, we would have subledgers with, you know, accounts payable Dawson, accounts payable uh, Pen Company, and, and and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to say AP accounts payable Dawson. I owe them twenty five hundred dollars. And in my explanation, I'm going to say bought merch, and I'm going to put in the terms one ten net. Okay, and again, that's just detail for me for whenever we eventually go back and pay Dawson. I'm going to need to make sure that am I within those credit terms? Am I entitled to a purchase discount or, or not? Okay, so let's look at the second, right? July 2nd, 7 2. We purchased goods from Pen Company, we purchased $4,500 worth of. Uh, inventory and here the terms are 210 net 30 okay so we're gonna do the same thing 
What am I getting? Inventory. Inventory is an asset. I need to debit it. Why? Because assets increase with a debit, and inventory is an asset. So I'm going to debit it for $4,500. And I'm going to credit accounts payable pen for the same amount, $4,500. And again, for my explanation, what I do, bought merch. This case, it's in this case, it's two, ten, net thirty, and we're moving along. Okay, what happened on the third? Paid freight on shipment from Dawson. Okay, so on the third, we paid freight, right? Some kind of shipping cost, freight cost, whatever. So remember, when we are the buyer, which we are in this case, any cost that we incur to get merchandise to us and get, get it ready for sale increases that inventory cost. So I'm going to debit inventory for the amount of uh, the shipping cost, which was $300. And I paid this, so I had to pay it in cash. So I'm going to credit my cash for $300. Again, what did I do here? Well, I'm just going to put an explanation. Shipping cost for Dawson order. Okay. Moving right along on the 5th. So on 7-5, what did we do? Sold merchandise to Ward Incorporated, $1,400. That merchandise cost us $1,100. So, again, unless noted, all transactions are on account. So, what do I have to do here? Well, first I got to book the sell or recognize that sales revenue. Second thing I need to do is recognize the cost. So, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to debit AR. And again, I'm going to keep track of who I'm selling merchandise to. So this is Ward. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, Ward is going to owe us $1,400. I'm going to recognize the sales revenue. Or we could just put sales. That's fine as well. And what am I doing here? Well, I'm just recording sale. Pretty simple, right? Now, remember, we always need a second journal entry whenever we sell merchandise or sell inventory. We have to recognize the cost. I'm going to abbreviate and say COGS. That stands for cost of goods sold, okay? So what's my cost here? Well, they tell us in the problem it's $1,100. So I'm going to debit COGS. What am I doing? Well, my in <clears throat> excuse me, my inventory, which is an asset, is being used, right? So that's why I recognize the expense. And now I need to decrease the inventory. So inventory is an asset. I decrease an asset with the credit, and I'm going to credit it eleven hundred dollars. Now on the eighth, what did? Oh, Sorry about that. 7 8, July 8th. What happened? Returned $500 worth of goods purchased July 1st from Dawson because some goods were damaged. Dawson, Dawson approved the returns. Excuse me. So, what's happening here? Well, we got merchandise in from Dawson. $500 of it wasn't acceptable to us. We said, Dawson, we ain't taking that. We are not taking this. We want to return it. Dawson said, no problem. Send it back to us. So what do we got to do? Well, we need to show that, first of all, we owe Dawson $500 less than whatever the purchase invoice says. The original purchase invoice was $2,500. We're sending $500 of it back. So I'm going to debit AP Dawson to show that I don't owe Dawson any money. And 
I'm going to debit it $500. I'm going to credit my inventory because I'm decreasing my inventory. $500. And what do we do? Well, we got to put in our explanation and we're going to say return merchandise to Dawson for credit. Okay. The next one is July 9th and it says received goods from Ward worth $200. The cost of that was $150. So what happened was we made a sell to Ward. Okay. So we are now the seller. We sold the Ward. Ward said, Hey, $200 of this stuff. I don't want it. I'm sending it back to you. We said, okay. So what do we need to do from the seller side? Well, pretty simple on uh, seven, nine, What's going on here? Well, the first thing we need to do is recognize that Ward does not owe us as much as the sales invoice says, right? We sold him $1,400 worth of stuff. He spent, sent him back 200 of it, okay? That means we don't have the sales, right? But remember, we never, ever, ever debit the sales account. We use those other accounts we have, right? our sales returns and allowance account. So I'm going to debit sales returns for the amount of return, which was $200. I don't have that sell anymore. I'm going to credit um, AR Ward, showing that Ward does not owe us that money anymore, okay? Then, come down a little bit here, okay. Then, well, put an explanation here. Um, issued credit for returned merchandise. For return merch, okay. So, I gotta back out those costs, right? I gotta put that inventory or that cost back into inventory and get it out of the cost of goods sold. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to debit inventory because my inventory is going up now by $150. Why $150? Because that's the cost of the merchandise. That's what it costs us. I'm going to credit COGS in the amount of $150. What's my explanation here? Well, um, returned merch okay so on the 10th well the 7 110 or sorry excuse me um, the first um, July 2nd or July 10th transaction says pay Dawson incorporated the amount due okay so let's think about this when did we per make the purchase well, we did it on the first, 110 net 30. Okay, cool. Am I within the discount period? We sure are, okay? So, what are we going to do? Well, on 710, we need to show that, first of all, we paid cash, we got rid of the accounts payable, and we're taking a discount, right? We are the purchaser. So we account for any purchase discounts within our inventory, right? So let's think about this. What am I doing? Well, I'm getting my accounts payable for Dawson off the books, right? Accounts payable is a liability. I decrease a liability with what? A debit. So I have to debit Dawson. Well, how much do I owe him? Well, I owe him $2,500. Oh, sorry. I owe Dawson $2,500, okay? How much cash am I paying? Well, that's simple. I'm paying them $2,500 
less 10%, right? So if my math is right, 2,500 times 0.1 is $250. So I'm paying them 2,500 minus 250. I'm paying them in cash $2,250. That doesn't balance, right? Debits and credits have to equal. Well, I'm not done. I need to account for that uh, purchase discount. I account for that in the inventory account because I am the um, purchaser. And I'm going to pay them the difference, which should be $250. Okay? So that's all we need. Oh, that is not all we need to do. We need to put in our explanation. What are we doing here? Well, paid Dawson. Okay. Now, the next uh, July 10th transaction we have says that we purchase goods from Dorn Company with a list price of $2,600 terms to 10 net 30. No problem. What are we doing? We're buying something. What are we buying? Inventory. Got to increase my inventory, right? So I'm going to debit inventory for the amount of the uh, sell, which is $2,600 and I am going to credit accounts payable this time I'm playing I'm paying Dorn $2,600 now what did I do here well my explanation says that I bought merch I don't need to say on account because I can look at the journal entry and I see that it's that it's that it's on account, so I'm okay with that. But I'm gonna put I'm gonna put in the credit terms, right? So what are the credit terms? Well, we know that it's 210 net 30. And we're good. Okay. So let's look at um, July 11th, 7-11. What happened? Well, they tell us that we paid freight on shipment from Dorn Company, 150 bucks. We are the purchaser. We are paying shipping, so it must be what? FOB destination. So I account for any shipping costs within my inventory. Why? Because again, I am the purchaser here. Uh, the cost of shipping is 150. So I'm going to debit inventory and I'm going to credit cash. For the amount of the shipping cost, 150. What's my explanation? Huh. Paid shipping for Dorn. Um, for Dorn order. Okay. Move down just a little bit. Okay. So what's next? On the 15th, we received the amount due from Ward. Fantastic. So before we start calculating any amounts, first thing we want to do is we want to see when did we sell Ward merchandise? Ah, on the 9th. Okay. Our credit terms are 210 net 30. Okay. They're paying us. Are they within the discounted period? I believe they are. Because we sold on the 5th. They're paying on the 15th. So they're within 10 days. It's the last day of the discount period. So... First thing we need to do is recognize that we are getting cash, right? We're in the discount period, so there is going to be a sales discount that we need to account for. 
And because we are the seller, remember we need to keep track of the um, sales discounts. So we're gonna hit sales discounts and what are we getting rid of? Well, that receivable, they don't owe us any money anymore. So we're gonna credit AR, okay? Now, how much are we gonna credit AR for? Well, let's think about this. We need to go back and look. We sold them $1,400 worth of stuff. They returned $200 worth of stuff. So that means that that receivable for Ward, do this, is $1,200, okay? What's the sales discount, right? Well, that's easy. They owe us $1,200 times 2%, $24. So how much cash are we receiving? $1,176, okay? So let's see what the next one we has have. On the fifth, or that's the, I apologize, this was, a, this was the 15th. It's kind of hard to like look up, look down, make sure I'm talking to the mic here. I apologize about that. Okay, so the next thing we have, or the next transaction, which again is also on July 15th, says that we sold merchandise to Colby Corporation, $3,200. The cost of that merchandise that we sold cost us $2,400. Remember, we're the seller. Anytime there's a sale, we gotta book two transactions. One to recognize the sale, the second to recognize the cost. Pretty simple. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is say 715. I have uh, sales revenue and I also have a receivable. So I'm gonna say AR, uh, Colby, Comp Colby Corp. And that amount is for $3,200. I'm gonna credit my sales revenue. For $3,200. Next, I'm going to recognize the cost. So I'm going to debit cost of goods sold for $2,400. I'm going to credit inventory because my inventory is going down for $2,400. Okay. I'm not. I'm going to leave the explanation here blank um, for two reasons. Number one, it'd be a, a bit redundant. Number two, um, I already know that all my credit terms are 210 net 30. So anytime I sell something, it's 210 net 30. If I, if I offer different credit terms for different customers, I put that in there. But since it's, it's always 210 net 30, there's really no need to make a, you know, make a notation there. Okay, so on the 16th, it says that we mailed a check <clears throat> to Penn Company for the amount due on its July 2nd invoice. So let's think about this, July 2nd, right? Let's go up and look, make it easier. Okay, 210 net 30, right? Are we within the discount period? Well, we're paying them on the 16th. We're outside the discount period, right? We didn't get the discount. Because we would have, in order to receive this discount, we would have to pay them within ten days. Ten days from the second would be the twelfth, so we forego our uh, purchase discount here. So on the sixteenth, I am going to show that I don't have an accounts payable for Pen Company anymore. Okay, I'm off the books. Now, how much do I owe Penn? Well, find this. I owe him $4,500, okay? Did I return any merchandise to Penn? Now, I'm just looking through here. 
Just want to make sure. Nope, we did not return any merchandise to Penn. I don't believe we did. Ward returned stuff to us. Yep. Oh, nope. Yes, we did. Nope, that was Dawson. That was Dawson we, turn, we returned to. Okay, so Penn, we're going to get it off the books for what, what it's um, stated at. Well, we have it on the books for $4,500. bucks. we are going to get it off the books for $4,500. bucks. How much cash are we paying them? Well, we're paying them $4,500. Okay. And then on the... 18th, that's the next transaction we have. Just gonna make some more room here. Okay. So on the 18th, what happens? Well, it tells us that on the 18th, we received an allowance of $200 from Dorn Company for defective merchandise purchased on July 10th. Okay. So remember, purchase returns, purchase allowance, right? Probably what happened was it was crap merchandise, right? It was maybe defective, but we didn't return it, right? Apparently they let us keep it because that's the allowance that they gave us, right? So how do I account for an allowance when I'm a purchaser? I keep track of it in my inventory, right? So I'm going to debit my accounts payable to Dorn. Why? Because I owe them $200 less. Okay? So I'm going to debit that for $200. I'm going to credit my inventory for $200. And what happened here? Well, I'm just going to say received perch allowance. Okay? Skip space. On the 19th, we actually paid Dorn the amount due. Okay, so let's let's look at that. So we're on the 19th. First thing I want to figure out is, am I within the discount period? So I'm going to scroll up, and I'm up. Oh, here we go. Okay, so on the 10th, Dorn, right? Here's the, the original purchase we made. Okay, so we bought $2,600 worth of merchandise. On the 18th, we returned $200 of the merchandise. So, how much am I going to get Dorn off of uh, my books for? Well, I'm going to get Dorn off of my books for the amount that I have a receivable for, right? Well, it was $2,600. They gave me an allowance of $200. So that must mean that I owe Dorn $2,400, okay? Then I have cash, right? I'm going to credit my cash here. How much am I paying Dorn? Well, sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. Okay. How much am I paying Dorn? Well, I owe him $2,400, but the... the, the um, terms are 210 net 30. I'm within the discount period. So I'm going to pay them $2,400 times 0 0.02, right? 2% 2 less. $48 less, right? Well, that's my discount. It was $48. So let's get rid of cash for just for one second. Okay. Follow me, th follow me through here. That's my discount. How do I keep track of my discount when I am a purchaser? In the inventory account. So my inventory is going to decrease by that dollar amount. So I'm going to put my inventory in there. <clears throat> now I can go ahead and calculate the cash payment. $2,400 minus the 2%, 48 bucks. I'm paying them $23.52, okay? And then the last journal entry we have is on 7.25, and it says received payment 
from Colby Corporation. Well, let's go back and look at Colby. So on the 15th, we sold Colby merchandise. They didn't send anything back to us. Remember our credit terms, 210 net 30. So guess what? Colby is within the discount period. We need to book a sales discount. Okay, so let's think about this. I'm getting cash. There's a sales discount I need to recognize. And that receivable is being satisfied. So I can take the accounts receivable for Colby off my books. How much am I getting it off the books for? Well, it was $3,200, right? That's, that's what um, Colby owed me originally. Well, they don't owe me that anymore. So I'm going to credit accounts receivable for $3,200. I need to figure out my sales discount. Well, that's easy. The purchase invoice was for $3,200 times 0 .02, $64. So that they get a discount of $64. How much cash am I getting? Well, $3,200 minus the 2% discount of 64. I'm receiving cash of $3,136. And that's pretty much all the journal entries for problem 5-2B. Um, your homework, problem 5-2A, going to be identical, right? Same thing. You're going to purchase goods from a company. They're going to offer you terms. You're going to sell goods to a company. You're going to offer them terms. You need to make sure you, you, you properly book uh, any purchase discounts um, or any purchase returns, which is handled through the inventory account. If you're selling merchandise and you offer any sales discounts or you offer, you accept any returns from who you, um, who you sold to, you use those two contra revenue accounts that we, we talked about, sales returns and allowances, and then sales discounts, okay? So when we come back in our next video, we're going to look at problem 5-5. And we're going to put together a income statement. So uh, tune back in for that one.